Hey guys, here's a video to help you with some of the midpoint problems um, that you need to be able to do. So let's just start out with the basics and uh, we'll kind of work our way up from there. Suppose you have a, uh, you know, a segment, segment AC, and you know that you have some other kind of line or something else that's what they call bisecting. So this is a bisector for this segment. If it's a bisector for this segment, that means it cuts the segment perfectly in half. So this little piece from here to here is the same as this little piece from here to here. Let's call that B. So no matter what this piece is, it's got to be the same as that piece. And if you know the total, well, then you know to get each little piece, you could just cut that in half. So sometimes you'll get the total is, say, you know, let's just say for argument's sake that this is 12 units long. Well, then immediately you know each of these is 6 units long. And that's all, it, that's all it's doing. If you have a bisector, you know that your segment is being cut perfectly in half. Okay, uh, sometimes you get them a little more complicated. Let's basically take the same scenario, and but this time let's use a little algebra. So let's say this is uh, x plus 6, and say this is something like 3x or something like that. Okay, so you're looking at this, and again, this is a bisector, or sometimes they may not say the word bisector, and you just may see these little markings on the picture. Uh, if these little markings are there, that means that these two pieces are the same. They're congruent. And sometimes they'll even just tell you that B is the midpoint. And if B is the midpoint, well, then the same thing. You know that this segment got cut in half. So there's sort of three different ways they can give you that information. You just need to you know, recognize those. So if this piece here, AB and BC, are congruent, right? If AB is congruent to BC, well, then that means that X plus 6 must be the same as 3X. So I can make an equation out of that. These are, you know, these represent numbers. X is some number. So x plus six must then equal three x, and now we can solve it with our usual algebraic, you know, strategies. So six is going to equal two x. That means x equals three, right? Divide both sides by two. You get three. Let's check it. Let's make sure it worked. Three plus six is nine. Three times three is nine. Nine, of course, is the same as nine, and now you got the whole thing. Okay. So these are some of the basic kind of problems that you, you, you know you need to be able to do. And then like in class, if they give you the coordinates, um, you know, let's say they give you a point R is at you know 3, 1 or something, and S is at 3, uh, 7. Let's just use a couple there. And they want you to find the midpoint of that segment. Now you could plot it and try to, you know, get a rough idea of where that would be. Or in actuality, since I did, you know, let's change this. Let's make this negative 3. Um, you know, you might be able to get an easy, you know, answer just by plotting it. But let's let's assume that it's not so easy, and we need to follow our midpoint formula that we came up with. So the midpoint formula was the average of the x values, and then the average of the y values, and that makes a new coordinate, m. Okay. So uh, as we talked about in class, uh, I'm sure you know you have to label these. It makes it a little easier to make sure you substitute properly. So I usually just use the first point that I see as my ones and the second point that I see as my twos. Okay, it doesn't really matter. This could be the ones and this could be the twos. What you don't want to do is go x1, x2. That doesn't make any sense. Every point you have, you know, if you were to graph this, you would need an x value and a y value in order to know where it goes. So be careful there. That's a common mistake. So the midpoint here for this example would be 3 plus negative 3 over 2, 1 plus 7 over 2, and let's simplify that. That's 0 over 2, oops, comma, uh, 8 over 2. I kind of scrunched it there. And then last but not least, 0 over 2 is 0. 8 over 2 is 4. The midpoint of this segment is 0, 4. OK? And these are the basic midpoint problems you need to be able to do you know, going forward. I'm going to make another video with a little more advanced um, practice. And, but hopefully this will at least get you going with the midpoints. If you have any questions on any of these or any of the ones on the homework, please let me know, and I'd be happy to help out. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye.